Hello and welcome to week 34's Dinosaur, another seven curious, interesting, innovative, hopefully useful things I've seen in the last week. Let's crack on. Um, first one is um, a lot of patents have been coming out from Apple recently, about 70 in the last couple of weeks. Um, so this one is for AirPod Pros and it's a patent that really extends uh, the usefulness of AirPod Pros into sort of entertainment and also safety as well. Um, so the first one, as you can see on the left-hand side, are two cyclists um, coming up to a junction, and the cyclist behind clearly got his music on, and uh, the cyclist in front also has AirPods. They can detect each other, know that it must be quite a busy junction because there's a lot of technology happening and a lot of people sat in cars with AirPods also, and therefore it turns the music down uh, or can warn you of the junction, for instance. So that's how they're using it in that sort of example. And on the right-hand side, you can see a slightly more connected system. So you've got a, an exercise mat full of sensors, You've got interactive clothing full of sensors which you can detect posture for instance and then the feedback loop is via the AirPods themselves So if you're holding a good posture with your yoga, it can tell you that if you're not then it can tell you that also um, If you're holding it correctly, you can then start the music playing in at the right tempo for your heartbeat and all that sort of stuff Because clearly you've also got your Apple watch on so it's a really interesting how the AirPods are being um, essentially included in these exercise and safety systems rather than just for um, music and microphones. Um, Netflix would like you to know that they've been nominated for a load of Emmy Awards. So um, what they would normally be doing this time of year is we'll be doing some sort of physical uh, experiences in um, stations and uh, shopping malls, that sort of thing. Uh, obviously they can't do with COVID. So um, they've created a really cute, there's nothing new about this, but it's a really nice um, augmented or VR experience. So uh, if you've got a mobile phone, you can click the link, uh, you go to the website, and you can just look at it through your mobile phone and move it around and see what's going on. Uh, you can click on your website and you can use your mouse or if you've got a um, VR headset, you can use that as well. Um, so for instance, Stranger Things, you can go through the door, you can experience the locations and several of them are interactive. So they have sort of more things to discover in each one of the locations of hotspots and you'll link through to a video in the end. So, you know, nice cute way of getting you to, um, by the way, um, remind you about Netflix and also to, to sort of immerse yourself back into those series. Um, it's all PR. So um, going on a different speed on this one. So this is the US forces um, or US government, um, I guess, um, are looking at alternatives to GPS. So GPS is um, essentially vulnerable if there's any sort of war um, or any sort of attack, cyber attack. So you need something a little bit more robust um, to launch aircraft or um, sort of direct food or launch missiles, for instance. Um, so all those lovely things. So uh, what they're doing is they've got quite a few interesting novel approaches. This is one of them. They're, for instance, they're using quantum entangled clocks on one of the approach, which is quite neat. Um, this one is about magnetism and the Earth's inherent magnetism. So if you can map, if you can fly an aeroplane, for instance, as a, an example here, and it has a, um, uh, a direction, uh, it obviously has its height, uh, and it has a magnetic sensor on it. So what it can do is it can fly over areas, it can uh, map the Earth's um, local magnetic um, map, I guess, um, and therefore um, create a, uh, a map that can be shared with other people. Therefore, if you've got a, another magnetic uh, sensor I, on your phone or in your aeroplane, you can also then sense those. You can compare it to the map and therefore know exactly where you are. So it's 10 meter accurate or 30 feet accurate. Um, so it's good enough at the moment and it will only get better. So um, why this also caught my eye is you've seen a lot of news, uh, Elon Musk, etc., launching low earth orbit satellites. Um, it's really the high earth orbit ones that are really used for um, geostationary positioning. Um, however, they sort of move up and down when they need to, or at least they're launched up and down when they need to. Um, so if we can do away with a whole bunch of those, that will be useful for the Earth um, and also the junk floating around the Earth. So less satellites is good, but also less reliant on those satellites um, for navigation will also be good. So this might become a civilian thing um, in some point in the future. Um, China is moving ahead with its cryptocurrency. So you can see some examples in front of you. So Union Pay, Alipay from Alibaba, for instance. Um, so it's not a new thing. Um, but it's a state-sponsored cryptocurrency. So this is not like Bitcoin. Uh, so Bitcoin, for instance, is um, it's almost like an investment uh, vehicle. Uh, so it can go up and down, and if you can invest and you can short and you can long, you can do all that trading stuff on it. Um, and that's why it's not really getting a huge amount of use because, uh, well, why spend it if it might go uh, up in value next week and you kick yourself, you should have just saved it. So that's the problem with Bitcoin or many of the problems with Bitcoin. 
However, um, the good stuff about Bitcoin is uh, when the transactions are made, they go onto a blockchain uh, and those blockchain uh, can therefore be used to store that data um, and it can be um, checked essentially. Um, so what China are doing is they're saying, well, we're going to peg our new cryptocurrency directly against our normal currency. So one for one. So it's not going to speculate. Uh, you've used all this. If you've used an Apple Pay or if you've used um, a debit card, you're doing exactly this. You know, it's just a digital payment. You've not used cash. Um, however, the, the difference of this is it goes onto a blockchain. So they will be using a cryptocurrency system. Um, and the interesting thing about that is that obviously if you are a state and everything is digital, then you then have access to who spent what where, uh, for what and when and for how much. So you know about every single thing that's been purchased and where people are buying things. So you can tell uh, things like migration from different places to the other, where people are on holiday um, or what the, you know, what the, the trends are within your country to then predict them on an economic basis. So, and that's why they're doing it. Um, Another interesting effect is if this goes ahead and it does well, then, well, this is what's called a stable coin. It's pegged to your normal economy. Um, so therefore, well, this is the holy grail for mass uh, cryptocurrency use is something that doesn't go up and down, something that's really stable. Um, it doesn't use all that credit cards and bank stuff. It's destabilized from that. It uses its own system and it's a global system. So um, watch this space. Obviously, it's China only and probably will always remain that. But um, let's see what they're doing and um, see how it goes. Um, this one's slightly nerdy. Um, for, I'll try and keep it quick so I don't <laughs> don't uh, sort of belie how, how amazing I think this is. However, we've seen quite a lot more QR, QR codes um, come COVID. Um, so if you've been to um, maybe a, a beer garden near you, uh, you might be asked to scan a QR code on the table to make your order on a website and then it goes through to the bar uh, and then somebody brings it out. So QR codes are actually starting to become more useful. They've been around for, I don't know, 10, 15 years. Um, but they're, you know, People love them, people hate them. Um, however, um, Matt KC, who's a YouTube coder, um, and this is interesting for a couple of reasons. One is um, what you're seeing in that little square with the dots, big QR code, that contains all of the game code itself, like the raw code to run the game, not just a link to a website to download it, that's actually the game code. And it also has the compiler in it. So all you've got to do is hold it up to your webcam uh, and it will compile the code it will create an exe file that you can then double click and then you can run the game. So that's that's actually pretty bonkers. Um, so that's amazing. So you can then put, have whole experiences potentially just in a um, an inert physical code. Um, the scary thing is clearly, well, if you can compile a game, you can compile something that can delete all of your files, it can lock your hard drive, all those sorts of things. So um, beware if you see a giant QR code in the street. Uh, don't necessarily, it says, you know, get a free donut by scanning this. <laughs> we might need to be a little bit more um, aware of those in the future. So I thought it'd be an uh, interesting warning. Um, this is super interesting as well. So this is um, Fortnite. Uh, and uh, uh, and Apple and also Google having a little bit of a, a dig at each other. So this is Epic Games and they're both, I mean, it's not like David and Goliath, it's not really, it's Goliath and Goliath. Epics uh, are huge. Uh, they're also 40% owned by a Chinese company. So there's all sorts, of, all sorts of narratives going on here, but essentially what's happened is uh, Fortnite, a huge game, has an app on the App Store, both on the Google App Store and the Apple App Store, uh, within the game, you can then buy in-app purchases for the game. Now, Apple insists that you give them 30% of anything that you um, sell on the Apple App Store. Now, obviously, if you create your own sort of embedded App Store that they can't get hold of and they don't know what you're selling, then they can't ask for their 30%. So essentially, they said, well, it's against our terms and conditions. We're going to take you down. And they literally took them off. Now, the, the sort of the juicy part of this is clearly 1984 Orwell's um, or the parody ad by Apple uh, in 1984 was an amazing, um, uh, amazing sort of moment in advertising where it's essentially Apple saying, you know, the two fingers up to the, the establishment and, and basically overthrowing power. Now, obviously, it's, you know, many, many years later, 30 or so years later, um, Fortnite are basically saying you are now the big stuffy suits that are crushing all of the sort of the innovative thinking. So it's, it's just a really, really interesting play that they're doing here. And by the way, Apple didn't even clear the copyright for the uh, 1984 Orwell uh, advert in the first place. So there's, there's sort of, there's narratives within narratives. So watch this space. Um, the, the interesting thing about this one as well is that you're, you are now garnering the passion of a lot of a younger audience here. So if you say Apple are evil, they're stopping us playing our games, then 
that's not great for Apple and their future customers. So it's quite an interesting game that Epic are playing here by essentially sort of um, getting a younger audience potentially against um, a big tech company. Um, we'll see where that one goes. So uh, grab your popcorn, see where this one goes. Uh, and finally, the case crawler. So um, I'm not really going to hang around on this one because it is as stupid as it looks. Um, but essentially, this is a, um, <laughs> a system from Seoul University, so South Korea. Um, and uh, this little phone case has tiny little legs in it. And there's a lot more to the video. You can see here, like a slightly creepy version of it without the actual uh, case on it. Um, but what it does is it has tiny little legs. Um, and uh, it can steer itself using those tiny little legs and it knows where the wireless charging mat is. So if you left your phone on the surface and it started to run out of energy, it can crawl up to the charging mat and then charge itself. So clearly uh, this is just stupid, but um, that's kind of neat. You know, imagine um, all sorts of devices all of a sudden flying off and finding their own charging. We've seen this with robot um, lawnmowers and vacuum cleaners, that sort of thing. So, you know, it works, it's all fine. Um, but kind of creepy and just a bit of fun to end with. So thank you very much and I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next week.